In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can work with Integration Services Project using Business Intelligence Development Studio. To start off with this demo, let us get into Bits. Now you see the familiar Bits environment. And in this demo, I already preloaded or pre-opened an SSIS project, which we call DW Load. And one of the things that you'll notice is this new icon, which tells you that this project is currently using the project deployment model. If I right click on this project, you'll see that if you prefer to make use of the old model, you can choose to convert this project back to using a legacy deployment model. Or you can make use of some of the new features that are available in the project deployment model. One of these new features is the ability to create project parameter. If I were to click on project parameters, you'll see that for this project, I've already created two parameters, one which I call EDW server, and the other which I call EDW database. Next, I'm going to show you how I can make use of these parameters in the packages. To start off, let me open the DW Loadmaster package. And I'm going to make use of these two parameters in a connection manager. Click on a connection manager. In order for me to make use of the parameters, I make use of expressions. And let me select this. And I can say that, well, for this particular connection manager, I want the initial catalog to make use of the value from the EDW da database. And I want the server name to make use of the value from the parameter EDW server. Once I'm done, I click OK. And what have I just done? I have made use of the two parameters which we saw earlier in a connection manager so that when the connection manager and the packages execute, the connection manager will then use the value from the parameters. In the second part of this demo, I'm going to show you how you can make use of some of the changes that we have made to the execute package task. To start off, let me click on a execute package task. You'll see the execute package task editor. And one of the things that you'll notice is that if I click on package, there's a new reference type. And this reference type allows you to specify whether you're using a project reference or an external reference. When you make use of an external reference, you can then refer to any of the existing package location, such as file system or packages that are stored in the SQL Server. But if you were to choose project reference, which is new in the project deployment model, you now have the ability to say, I want to refer to packages that are in the same project. In this case, you'll see that I can refer to any of the packages in the project. And in this demo, I've chosen that I want to refer to the package called loaddimcustomer.dtsx, which is a package that's currently in my project. The other new thing that you'll notice is that now there's a parameter bindings. Now what this parameter binding means is that if you have a package and parameters have been defined for the package, you can then make use of this parameter binding to specify the value for these parameters during the execute package task execution. Once I'm done, I have successfully set up this execute package task to refer to a package that's in the same project. In addition, you'll notice that if I right click on a project and I choose properties, you will see some information about this uh, project. For example, who created it? What is the computer in which it was created on? The name of the project. And at the same time, you'll also be able to specify which server do you want to deploy this project to. For example, I could say, well, I want to deploy this project to a production folder. Once I'm done with that, I can choose to build the project. When a project is built, what it does is that it takes all the packages that the project contains and put them into a single unit of deployment, a file which we call Integration Services Project Deployment File, 
which you can find in the directory bin and you'll see that in this bin directory as a result of me clicking on build uh, integration services project deployment file has been created and the extension for this integration services project deployment file is an IS pack. Once that is done, I can choose to deploy this project to the server. The moment I choose deploy, the deployment wizard will launch. I go through the steps. I say this is the location where my IS pack is. This is the server I'm going to deploy it to. I can browse for folders that's on the server. Or in this case, I'm going to deploy to the folder called production. Choose next. When this is done, the deployment wizard will then make use of the information that you have provided and deploy this project successfully to a SQL instance. If I were to click on this instance and take a look at the projects, you'll see that the DW load project has been successfully deployed to the production folder. Let us recap what we have seen in this demo. In this demo, we have seen how we can make use of some of the new features in the project deployment model. They are, one, we show you how we can make use of project parameters, how we can make use of expression to assign the value of project parameters to properties. I've also shown you how you can make use of execute package tasks using a project reference to refer to packages that are in the same project. In this demo, we have also seen how we can build a project which will produce a single unit of deployment which we call the integration services project deployment file which has an extension of ISPEC and how this ISPEC file can be deployed to a SQL Server instance with integration services installed. Thank you.